Hello, in this video, I'm going to show how we can use clustering uh, for image analysis. Uh, in particular, we're going to try to answer these two questions. First, uh, what are the top, say, eight colors in an image? And then, is there a way we can segment the image so that we can see clearly uh, the different regions that have uh, basically different colors without getting caught up in the details of you know, having slightly different shades of red? And um, and so we're going to use k-means clustering for this. And all the examples we've done in k-means clustering so far, we've had two columns, maybe an x and a y column. And, uh, and we've been looking for clusters that way. Here, uh, what we're going to do is we're only going to have one image, uh, but each pixel, kind of each dot of color, this is going to be its own row in our table. And we're going to just have these three columns, which are going to represent how much red, blue, and green there is for each pixel. And we aren't going to care for the purposes of this one um, about the positions of those pixels. We're just trying to look at clusters of, of colors in the images. If you're curious, um, this example I'm doing actually comes out of this book, um, Hands-On uh, Machine Learning uh, by Aurelian Drone. Uh, maybe some good summer reading if anybody is interested. Anyway, so I'm set up here. I'm importing k-means, uh, plt, and you can see I'm already reading in uh, the image, right? And when I do that, what do I do? I get this big uh, matrix where um, at the lowest level, right, I have these three colors, which is the amount of red, green, and blue. And, um, and then the first two levels, right, I'll hit like this, are the rows and the columns of that image and those three colors. <clears throat> and so I'm showing that image here. And, and so here we actually have a few million pixels, right, if I multiply the rows by columns. And since I've already worked through this, I know that that's um, too many to do in memory in my virtual machine. And, and so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a slice of my image and maybe i'll just take every 10th pixel um, so it kind of fits more nicely and so to do that i have to have a row slice column slice and a color slice and i want to get all the colors i'm just trying to say slice there like that slice everything but for the rows um, i want to take every 10th right so remember this is the start stop and then step so i'm taking a step of 10 and we get every 10th row the same thing here, I'm gonna get every 10th column. I run that again, and, and now I just see it's gonna be a smaller image. And I run that, and, and you can't really see that much of a difference. It's just a little bit grainier. Okay, great. Let's see if we can find the main colors that are inside of that image uh, using k-means. And so I'm gonna head down here like so, <coughs> and, um, and I'm gonna create a k-means uh, k model like this. And, um, and, and for now, I'm just going to keep the defaults and number of clusters is going to be eight. And, um, and now what? So I'm going to fit it to the data like so. And, um, you know what though, when I'm doing this, I actually have to reshape the data a little bit first, right? So I need the image as columns, right? Because that's what it's expecting. And so before this, I'm going to head back here and I'm going to look at my image and I'm going to reshape it. I don't really care about the position of, of each of these things, but I want to have three columns representing the three colors, right? So I'm going to take however many rows necessary, and then I'm going to have my three columns, and these are those red, blue, uh, red green, blue values. Um, so I'm just trying to do this. Maybe I'll call this, um, I'm going to call this a color table, right? And if I wanted to, I could, I could throw that in a data frame just to see it a little bit easier. And in this case, the columns will happen to be red, green, and blue. Okay, so I have that. And, um, and down here, I'm not even going to bother uh, sending in as a data frame. I'm just going to directly send in that color table. I'm going to run that. That takes a moment. And, um, and then there's a couple things that I can look at. One is if I look at the cluster centers. Right, I can get those, and and so I have eight rows because there's eight cluster centers, and um, and it's three dimensional because I have these three colors, right? So I can't easily plot this like I've done in all the other uh, scatter plots where we've been visualizing clusters, right? Because it's three dimensional. I have the red, the green, and, and the blue. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to see what these different colors look like, and see are we capturing uh, the main colors inside of this image. Okay, so maybe I'm just going to have this image down here uh, handy so we can compare this. 
And um, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, uh, you know, I have eight different colors. I'm going to create a two by four grid of the clustered colors, right? And see if we can uh, see what the main color theme is, is in here. And you can imagine doing this for different reasons, right? Maybe I want to build a website where the color theme is based off of this image of a ladybug. Okay, so to do this, what do I need to do? I need to say, grab this thing, reshape it, and I wanted two rows, four columns, and then at each of those positions on the table, I have three colors, so kind of these three layers. I do that, and now I'm just going to say dlt.image show, and and see what those colors actually are. And um, and it's complaining right now because when I'm trying to use image show uh, on RGB data, that stands for red, green, blue. It, it wants the values to be either between zero and one if I have floats, or in this range if I have integers. And, and the problem was is that I started off with integers, as you can see before, right? In my original data, I had integers. That's what I was able to do it before. Um, but when I found these cluster centers, everything ended up as a float. And, um, and so what I should really do is I should just force it back to be a, an, an integer, and these values will be close enough it's by just rounding down. I can do that same thing here too as type integer. And now I can actually get this nice matrix and I see sure enough, these are the colors um, that show up in the image. Right? Like this is the red for the, for the ladybug. These are the different shades of green that show up in the image below. Right, And I could use these colors then to build my website or whatever. The other thing I might wanna do is if I'm trying to feed this image into some machine learning um, algorithm, say for detecting different kinds of insects, um, it's often useful to pre-process the image and simplify the data, right? Instead of having an image with, you know, thousands of different kinds of colors in it, uh, it's nice to have a simpler image, maybe with only eight different distinct colors in it, and then, you know, other kinds of machine learning can uh, work better on that if I have some, say, uh, you know, deep neural net. And so let me try to do that. Let me try to, uh, let me try to convert this image to the eight colors that we've discovered. And, um, and the way I can do that is I can say km.labels. I talk about what this means. Uh, this means that uh, for each uh, pixel I had, right, for each row on that original table, it tells me what cluster it is in. So the very first one was in, in cluster zero, next one was in cluster two, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna be using that. And then I'm also gonna be using my cluster uh, centers. And um, when I have a cluster of centers like this, actually one of the things I could do is I could put an array and say, hey, I want um, you know, two of the first row like that, and, and then give me the seventh row, and the fifth row, and seventh row again. And, and you can see that this is almost like fancy indexing, but instead of putting in a Boolean series, I'm putting in um, a, a kind of a series of, of integers, right? And I can, I can build that. And so what this is gonna be great for is I can use these labels, right? What cluster, each pixel got assigned to, and I'm gonna pass that in here, like so. And then that's gonna basically convert those labels back to the cluster center. So I'm gonna run that. And I may have a lot of repeats here, right? Because there's a lot of pixels in the same cluster, right? So I'm getting these red, green, blue values that are the centroids for every color up here, right? So there's only eight different kinds of ro uh, rows here. And, um, and so this is great. Um, I couldn't do an image show on this right now, right? If I try to do this, it's not going to be happy. And, and the reason is because it's this really long, narrow thing. What I need to do is basically opposite of what I had done earlier, right? Before, way, way back here, actually, I had taken my original image, which was this two-dimensional thing, and I, I reshuffled all the pixels. So I had this, you know, one row per, per pixel. And, um, and so my output is in this shape. What I want to do is I want to get back from the color table shape back to the, to the image shape. And so I'm gonna head down here and I'm gonna say uh, reshape. And, um, and I could say like the number of rows and columns, right, if I wanted to. But the easiest thing to do is just force it back into the shape of the original, uh, which was this. Right, so I'm gonna do that and um, and I'm just gonna call this color eight. So, 
And um, and then if I want to, I can do the uh, image show on this. Uh, and um, you know the same same deal as before, right? I have to say, well, I, I guess I could say as type integer. I could do that either here or here. Uh, I'm going to prefer to do it in the first place because then I only have to do it on eight values instead of you know thousands, right? So I'm going to run that. And now I get this simplified version of the original image that's going to be easier to do, uh, to run other algorithms on, right? Because there's only really eight categories, but it's certainly enough to detect, at least as a human, um, what, the, what the image is about.